is the first session as in the zero at session today we are going to do the installation we will get started with how to use python today the biggest question you will face is that i don't know python then how am i going to install so don't worry about it just follow installation instructions you'll be able to install and go ahead tomorrow when we have the actual session there is no problem in doing the hands-on the way we we conduct most of our sessions is that all of our attendees will have to do hands-on during the session along with the instructor so basically while the instructor is showing something you will have to do the same thing with at your own setup or using the cloudx lab before we start let me just introduce ourselves about cloudx lab the main objective at cloudx lab is make learning fun and for life the, the current focus of cloudx lab is teaching the technology so we are starting with the Python for machine learning before this we have been the pioneers of lab for big data and Hadoop and spark now we are starting with the Python for machine learning we have done machine learning courses for many people and we have taught Python earlier for many people but we have not launched it on cloudx lab on the website so in this session we will first introduce ourselves and then we will go ahead with the installation that's that's all is the agenda for today the idea is to make learning fun and for life first part of making learning fun is the videos or the live sessions the quizzes and the exercises that will be provided to you in the cloudx lab then the hands-on assessments this is something unique about us that we will we will go into detail projects and case studies all of this will be based on real life use cases the core idea that is behind automated hands-on assessment this part that we talked about is learn by doing we can only learn by doing things otherwise we will not retain and we will only remember the words and the theory therefore the sole idea is learning by doing and how do we do that there is a problem statement that you will be provided to you there will be a problem statement that a hands-on assessment provides you and then you will have to perform hands-on only then the automatic assessment will happen this is something traditionally an instructor will do for you that you will solve something and show it to an instructor or a teacher or a professor and they will say yes you're doing a good job but we have made it automated that means the overall response time of assessment is drastically improved I'll show you a, a glimpse of it. You get a problem statement, you go into the lab, you do the hands-on, and automatically system checks whether you have done things correctly or not. This has been very successful uh, approach in my learnings. I have taught close to 2,000 hours by now. I found that this approach is something which is making people learn stably. Stably means learning for a longer period of time so that you don't miss out, you don't forget, and you are able to solve larger problems this is one screenshot of the hands-on assessment here it's giving you a challenge that you will have to log in into the console on cloudx lab once you are done you have to click on i'm done please check and then it goes and checks whether you have really logged in or not other example of hands-on assessment is this here it's asking you to write simple code like define x as 10. Don't worry if you have no, no idea about this, just be with me. So here it's providing you a challenge and then you have to log in into CloudX Lab and, and into the Jupyter. We will talk about all of these today, so do not worry about it. When you click on I'm done, it will go and check whether you are doing things good in Python in the Jupyter. Only then it will give you go ahead. When I clicked on I am done, please check. Since I've not done anything on the right hand side, it, it shows me that X is not defined and assigned properly. The moment I define X as 10 in our usual worksheet, it will check and give you a go ahead. On the right hand side is something what we are going to show you today how to install and get up and running. Most of the course is designed such that you can work in the Jupyter. Jupyter is one of the IDs of one of the web interfaces of Python. And since we are aiming for analytics or machine learning in a longer future, we are going to focus more on Jupyter instead of Python ID. The course objectives on a larger scale is learning Python for machine learning and deep learning. This is the foundational course for machine learning and deep learning specialization. In this part, what we're going to learn is we're going to learn Python for machine learning 
with scikit-learn and TensorFlow. TensorFlow is for deep learning and scikit-learn is for machine learning. That, these are the things that we are going to learn as part of the full specialization course. The Python one is going to be focused more towards churning numbers and more towards learning Python in order to do the analytics and processing all kind of data. I'm the instructor for the course. I'm Sandeep Giri. I graduated from IIT Roorkee and uh, in long, long back. Then I have largely worked in my career on large scale computing. And as part of my career, I started with a company called DE Shaw. Probably only a few of you would be knowing this. It's a company where Amazon founder, Amazon's founder also worked. So it's a, it's a very interesting company where I have uh, largely worked on humongous clusters, like 10,000 computers clusters, a humongous data company, as in before big data, we actually were dealing with big data at DE Shaw. Afterwards, I founded a company called uh, tbits global then we i worked with inmobi in processing around 200 terabytes data afterwards i joined amazon at amazon i did the amazon detail page for phone the image processing for the amazon detail page large object the detail page at amazon is the page from where you do the purchase on the amazon.com if you go on to any product detail and you click on buy now that page is called amazon detail page so that's the page we owned and the, the image processing of on the left hand side is something which i did uh, along with building the base for the phone at heart i am a software engineer and i love explaining technologies so feel free to ask as many questions as possible if the time does not permit in the class i will answer your questions on the discussion forum that's about me we started cloudx lab because we realized that there is a need of upskilling a lot of people in the technology and there is a gap between the actual need in the industry and what's being taught so we started cloudx lab and we have done quite a few innovations in order to impart learning better the cloud lab was our first way of imparting the big data lab to many students for this we were calling this as no big data k-n-o-w big data that was humongously successful idea where people learned MongoDB and then all kinds of technologies. That's about the instructor. This is the first code that we're going to write today, which is two plus three. Instead of saying hello world, we are just going to write two plus three. This is something which we do in our first standard. This something does not require any explanation that why it's called code. So this is probably the easiest code I could come up with instead of saying hello world. So we are going to do this today after the installation. There are two ways to go ahead with Python. One is using the cloudx lab you're free to do the installation on on your own machine but we found that installation fails a lot of times and sometimes we do the installation at home and on the home laptop and we want to work and finish the ass assignments in the office then we don't have the the setup ready that's where we set up cloudx lab so that you can access it from anywhere so we're going to go ahead with cloudx lab so the process is basically you sign up with cloudx lab go into my lab credentials click on jupyter and that's it before we jump into jupyter then i'll just explain to you what is jupyter jupyter is basically a web-based interface to interact with python it's a web-based interface to interact with python while jupyter started as the web-based interface for python but now you can actually run r and other languages via jupyter i'm going to just show you how it looks so let me just go into cloudx lab in case you have not signed up for cloudx lab you can sign up there if you are planning to use cloudx lab for the lab you can basically enroll once you have logged in once you have enrolled for cloudx lab let's say i sign out here and i'll just show you how does it look and so if i go into lab then i can i can enroll for the lab whether one month three months or six months basically once you have taken the subscription you can just log in with your gmail id i'm right now logging into my pass with personal id into the cloudx lab when i click on my lab you go into lab credentials here in the lab credentials there is jupyter and we'll talk about the other tools later okay now this is jupyter jupyter provides you many things one is a way to manage your files and folders instead of logging into remote system using 
FTP or SSH, you can actually just write here, create folder here or create file here. This is a Jupyter. Now question somebody is asking is how Jupyter is different from PyCharm. PyCharm is something that you install on your desktop and generally that's good for writing the bigger softwares. Analytics, people use Jupyter primarily. Interactive shell is something that we require when we want to do the quick processing or instant work. This is Jupyter and next is once you have opened Jupyter, we have options of going to Scala if you want to learn Python or R or if you want to open terminal in order to interact with the Unix system directly. So here we are launching Python 3. So you can see this console. That's it. Here you can save this worksheet as well as we can work on it. Basically, each of these shells, this uh, text box that you see, here you can write your code. Let's say two plus three is my code. So it shows you the output here instantaneously. So if you want to check anything, if you, the, the quickest way of learning any, any new programming language is by trying again and again by trying again and again and quickly. There should not be a hurdle. There should not be hurdle like, I'll create a file, save the file, compile the file, and, and then run it. That It should not be like that. It should be just like calculator, and that's what Jupyter provides you or Interactive Shell provides you. I'll talk about Interactive Shell later. Those who have already signed up with Cloud Accept would be able to do it right away. Are you able to do it right away? The thing is that you have to press Shift and Enter. If you say 10, you can see I have assigned 40 to X. X is just another variable. I hope this is not um, you know, too difficult. And you can say X and it will print the value of X as 40. Okay, so now you got another calculator to use that is Jupyter here. You have to press Shift plus enter. Why not enter? Because the code could be bigger. It could be multi-line. Therefore, it's not twice. Therefore, they provided shift plus enter. You could write the first code without even learning the programming language. So we were able to launch Jupyter from CloudX Lab and we were able to write our first code. If you are really a console person who likes console, you can do that using the web console or even the console from within the Jupyter. Console from within the Jupyter is also possible or console from here. What is console? Console is a, a way to directly connect to a remote system. So here I'm logged into a remote system. Uh, I'm logging into remote system and all I have to do is copy paste the passwords. Don't worry, uh, I'm going to go through the installation on your desktop as well. This is just the Python one. We have launched the shell. I will talk about it briefly. So when we provide our login password and login into a remote uh, shell, this is called shell. It's asking for command. And as I type any command such as ls, it shows me the output. That's what any interactive shell does. The interactive shell is nothing but any kind of uh, program that takes a command for you and shows you the output. That's interactive shell. And it keeps on doing it over and over again. All right, the interactive shell could be of Python, it could be of Go, it could be Scala, it could be of Julia, and so many other systems provide interactive shell. Even the SQL MySQL provides the interactive shell. These are called interactive shell, and these are nice way to interact with any system. All right, here we are interacting with Unix directly. So I typed a command called ls, which means list the files and it is listing the files for me. We have created a public free tutorial on how to learn Linux. You can you can go over to CloudX Lab. There I have created a detailed tutorial on Linux. And my strong suggestion to all of you would be that you should learn a bit of Linux because if you are going to go for analytics or machine learning or data sciences or any server-side programming, DevOps and many systems, the Linux comes as handy. That's a primary requirement, okay? Linux or Unix, anything. And also the same knowledge will be applicable in Windows maybe in a couple of years because they are bringing same interactive shell in the Windows also. So this is the interactive shell. Now question is how do we launch the Python 3? Although Python can be launched just like this, but this one is Python 2. 
okay so we have set up a python 3 as well because we are going with python 3 in this course we are not going with python 2. the way we are going to do is we're going to first export this path we will set it up for you don't worry and then do this and then do this okay i'm going to paste the same command in the chat box as well paste the same command in the chat box and then python 3. so now what you see is uh th these commands will only work in specifically the first two commands will only work in the cloudx lab this is the same interactive cell you can see that we can start doing the computation like this so you see it's like a very simple calculator at your disposal this is python interactive shell press ctrl l and make the screen clear you can start using it in whatever way you want you will be able to do use it like a quick calculator so that's about a basic introduction to the console the interactive shell to get out of the interactive shell you can press ctrl d Control D is generally for ending any any input to the program. And that's true for everything. Even from here, if I press Control D, I will log out from the console. That's about the console. A question from Karimula is that, what is the history of Python? How is it different from R? Let's discuss it in the second session. Well, I'll make a note of it so that we can discuss tomorrow and go over what it is also i'll be very very open to you we will focus more on hands-on and we will not get into the the political wars of various languages we'll just set the motivation right that most of the work in today's time would be done in python as going ahead though there are many libraries available for r the same can be used in python by using pandas or similar way. We will talk about the motivation of behind using Python, but for now, the strong motivation to all of you is that it's not going to hurt you in any way to learn Python because it's going to be an additional tool in your arsenal. This is what we did just now. Let's install on your own machine. These are the steps that we are going to follow. Download Anaconda, install Anaconda, and then open the navigator and then open Jupyter. Give you the blog post link again. Okay, so here is the blog post link. So here, uh, what Abhinav has written is a detailed uh, installation instruction. Abhinav is a teammate from CloudX Lab. My whole team is in the session and they would be answering your questions. What we have here is the in detailed installation instructions. And this is the part that we're going to go. Since I, uh, since I don't have uh, Windows locally, so what I'm going to do is I'm logging into my paper space system. My paper space uh, system is basically providing me the Windows machine on the cloud. So I'm going to use a Windows machine on paper space. So a general thumb rule on Windows system is you should generally install Java JDK because many other tools will require it as you go ahead. Let me download Anaconda. The way to come out of the Python prompt is just pressing the control D. Now going ahead with download. So what you see is a Windows version here. Those who have CloudX Lab, they can actually happily use CloudX Lab. Those who want to install on the local, these instructions are for them. So the first thing we are doing is Anaconda. Anaconda is nothing but kind of a package manager. It has bundled various tools for data sciences. It has bundled various tools into a one big installer so that you don't have to hunt around for in individual tools. So that's the easiest path to take. I can give you the URL. No, paper space is not part of CloudX Lab. Paper space is basically a AWS kind of system whereby they provide us Windows. The Anaconda, we basically are downloading the Python 3.6 version. Python 3.6 comes with Python 3. This one comes with Python 2.7. Okay, most of the world has moved to Python 3. That's why we want to learn Python 3 instead of Python 2. There are only very minor differences, very slight differences in the way you use a language. So you will not have a problem using Python 2 or Python 3 at all. I'll talk about the differences later. These are very, very minor differences. I'm just going to go ahead with the installation. Eight seconds left. Okay, there's a question from Deepankar Mahanti. I think you can take a look at it. Minimum, your the main constraint on your laptop is generally the hardware. Be aware that when you set up anything, you might have to 
have a hardware upgrade uh, at various times and that's the one of the biggest reasons and one of the biggest motivations of building an online lab so that nobody has to install anything you can just search for anaconda and you should be there let me those who are asking for the download you can download from here let me just give you how do i copy from here actually between the virtual machines i'm not able to copy now it's not working I'm not able to copy between the virtual machines. Never mind. So I'm going to go ahead with the installation. Somebody from my team can put it. Okay, I'm going to register my default Python 3. Okay, and let this also be there. Okay, so here when I install Anaconda, these are the only options I have to select and click on install. It might take a bit of time. A question from uh, Vinudeep is that could you later spe specify the hardware requirement? I think there would be hardware requirements on their machines on their server as well. That will be more detailed. Looks like it's going to take some time. All right. In the meantime, I can answer your question by while the Anaconda is being installed. Those who are having the problems with the screen resolution, set the resolution uh, to 720p. Based on your bandwidth, YouTube sets the resolution automatically. Can I see the topics that we are covering today? We are mostly going to cover the installation guide today and the questions related to the installation. Is it going to take 30 minutes for me to install this? We did install earlier, but I uninstalled it in order to give you a demonstration. A question from Julie is that I'm unclear about imports. Imports is basically uh, those are the libraries that we are going to use during the course after the basics of Python. So we just gave you those two examples just to check whether you are able to import or not. Uh, so while this is being uh, installed, why, why don't all of you, those who want to install locally, also give it a try? As we go during the course, we are going to learn how to import another thing. Or do you mean that today are we going to use this? A question is, I hope WinPython also be bundled up with all packages. Could you please clarify how Anaconda differs from it? Thank you for letting me know there's something called WinPython. I've not tried WinPython. Biggest difference which Anaconda brings is, is that it bundles all the open source libraries with it. It brings scikit-learn, it brings numpy, it brings scipy and everything that is needed for data sciences, machine learning, analytics, other similar uh, branch of computing. A question is, I'm a bit unclear. Are we going to get machine learning basics, including maths for free today or later on? So today we are going to basically cover the installation only. So if you have already done installation, you are good to go for tomorrow. And then we're going to have four to five sessions. So we are going to first finish the Python basics. And there are few maths classes. Foundation course for our machine learning specialization is free. And that includes Python, linear algebra, the basics of the other maths required. So a question from Juhi is that, if I could import libraries, then I'm good to go. Yes. So you should be able to import libraries. And uh, let me see if we are able to do that. So when you do import NumPy, what happens when you run this command? When you, once the installation finishes and we are able to launch all of this and we say, NumPy or Pandas. These are the two big libraries. Pandas behave like R. There are those people who are coming from other programming languages like R, they find Pandas really useful. And it's actually useful for others as well. So these two commands you can try once you have installed. One is import NumPy. You should not be expecting any input. You should, If you run import NumPy and you get an error, that means it's not working. Otherwise, if you get no output, that means everything is good. When you say import something, it should not print anything. It looks like it's going to take a bit of time. A point from Deepanjan is that 
while installation is being done, why not continue with CloudX Lab Jupyter? Actually, the things that I have not planned yet is that do we need to go over since we are going to cover the basics tomorrow basics of python it'll make more sense this is where the installation is going on and the suggestion from the pandan is not bad actually in the meantime we could just experiment with the cloudx lab one so let me see if i'm able to import numpy and also those who are wondering what does these numbers mean this is basically the commands executed when you import something is nothing but saying that i'm going to use this particular third party package package is nothing but bundle of functionalities provided by other people the import pandas and import let me see that am i able to import this yes import tensorflow it's not working here so we'll have to see that we'll have to install tensorflow in this no worries so this is how the error you will get if you're not able to import anything easiest code to write is mathematical expression this is something we learned in the childhood question from muthi is that when i'm importing pandas this is the error that you get this kind of right so in pandas there has to be uh, one a not double a i think it's a typing mistake those who are still wondering you can press shift enter to execute anything and you can actually go up and execute anything at any point of time if you want to just use a jupyter out of the box uh, you can just sign up for cloudx lab the lab and you'll be able to just go ahead if you are looking for local installation of all these tools required for the course you can install anaconda question from dipanjan is that can you save online description of three packages numpy pandas and scikit-learn pandas gives you the ability of dealing with data data in the form of tables that we call data frames that's pandas numpy provides you a big array and couple of more functionalities while the scikit learn provides you the whole machine learning suite so scikit learn depends on numpy and there is another tool another library called scipy scipy is basically the scientific functions scikit learn as k learn depends on numpy and scipy and pandas depends on numpy i know that it doesn't mean much right now but as we go ahead and you start using them you will have a clear idea so numpy is the most basic one pandas is kind of tabular structure it provides you tabular structure and the operations to operate on tabular structure of data scikit-learn is basically a a library of functions for machine learning. A question from Aditya is that can we use import command in terminal? Of course you can. Do we have it open somewhere? I get Python 3. If I say Python simply, the, the default is going to be Python 2, I think. Here we have realized. When we uh, say Python 3 here, we say import numpy, import pandas, then we say import even scipy and import scikit-learn these are the packages in python these are basically bundle of codes that have all the functionalities required by the classic machine learning i'm not sure if tensorflow is something which we have put in this particular one we're going to install it very soon no, it's not there so in this package this anaconda package doesn't have tensorflow we learn how to put it there our question is how normal python learning is different from python from machine learning so there's no difference of the language as such it's only the difference of packages the basic foundation of language such as the constructs like loops and the classes and objects everything will remain as such the entire logic will remain as such the only difference is in the libraries that we use that's first difference second is sometimes we differ in the choice of the tool for example right now we are going to use jupyter so some of us would prefer to go with thick client based system like pycharm or any other installed ide integrated development environment so those are the difference in choices where we have to write a lot of code first and then see the results at a later point of time like in a web application in that case we choose to go with text editor or uh, development environment so that's one of the difference so these are the basic two main differences so usually the sessions are three hours Edwin today we are going to just go over the installation the session might end in maybe like 15 to 20 minutes from now 
a question from somebody is can you show the navigator an anaconda command prompt on your local machine i'll show you very soon which book can we refer for machine learning the one that we are though we are going to go with multiple books we are going to combine multiple books in the course the few books that we will follow is one for machine learning we are going to one is the documentation of scikit-learn scikit-learn's documentation is really good here this one the tutorial is really nice that's the first thing that we're going to follow the second thing that we are going to follow is this book hands-on on machine learning and deep learning along with that there are a few more books that we will combine together in order to go with the course so this is one of the books that we're going to follow other than the basic manuals the installation it's finished so learn more about anaconda cloud and learn more about support that's okay now we have installed python 3 anaconda now once you're done with it you will see anaconda navigator did launch so these are the steps with which we followed we downloaded it we launched it and then we are trying to launch the anaconda navigator all right so the anaconda navigator is done so we have Jupyter Notebook here. The same way, once we launch the Jupyter Notebook, we can just click on it to launch Jupyter Notebook. What is Jupyter Notebook? Jupyter Notebook is nothing but a page on which there are cells in which you can write code. And when you press Shift Enter, it will display you the results. This is Jupyter. Jupyter is basically various kinds of notebooks as well as these functionalities it provides like file management and terminal. You can see that we have started that's our first code it's working fine and when i say import numpy and import and us it does work let me see if scikit-learn it installs or not i think so oh it's taking some time also when you see the asterisk here when you see this means it's taking time okay it's executing this is installed if you want to see num, if you just type num and shift enter module numpy and blah blah blah. A question from Ravi is TensorFlow to be installed with GPU, CPU, or regular normal one? Regular normal will suffice for most of the cases. The GPU one has a little bit glitches. Also, for GPU one, you need to have the GPU machine. What is GPU? GPU is a graphical processing unit. It's basically earlier people used it for playing games or heavy heavy graphics because gpu provides really good mathematical processing unit and soon enough people realize that the same thing could be used for machine learning very well because machine learning also requires a lot of mathematical operations okay a question from shavan is why are terminals not available in local installation because probably the windows doesn't provide you a linux like terminal that's one of the reasons we can open the anaconda prompt and then see what happens there let's see if python 3 is launched let me see by going to anaconda prompt you can open the python console same way as jupyter we can type here our commands and it will work so it looks like all the imports are working correctly Let's see if Yes. Question from Juhi is that what's the equivalent of this on Mac? Uh, Mac also has a very good command prompt. I'll show you on Mac. So if you go here in the terminal, there also you will see Python 3. I have installed Python 3 here. The installation instructions on the Mac are similar. And if you are on CloudX Lab, you can simply SSH into CloudX Lab. So I'm going to the same you are the web console whatever we had on cloud Lab, and this is my login for you it will show you password and here also we can start the same way that was our local mac console great so we are able to use the anaconda prompt question from narsima is that what's the benefit of python over r for machine learning the question will come again at this one i would like to go into more details when we discuss python in more details tomorrow second is uh, learning python will not hurt you it's okay to learn a newer language python is quite popular because it basically lets you even develop the web applications and all kinds of systems along with machine learning python provides you a rich set of libraries 
which you can use and it's set of functionality with respect to defining classes or anything Python has got better adoption as of today so that's uh, more or less about it so I'll just go over a few more things so what we did today was did the installation so we just followed a very simple form of installation we installed one we just used CloudX lab instead of installing second we installed the anaconda locally and then used the Jupyter you can have access to the course if you go to my courses since you must have signed up at cloudx lab already even for free then in the my courses you will get free courses whatever we keep on providing you you can continue your learning there for the discussions please come over to a discussion forum that's a quite active forum for big data machine learning and general computing problem we would love to answer your questions there so here are the questions that being answered already so come over to the forum and and we would love to answer your questions. We started with the agenda that we are going to learn how to get started and installation. We talked about the CloudX Lab. The sole agenda that we have is to make learning fun and for life. We provide live as well as video, then quizzes, then hands-on, then projects and case studies. Hands-on is an inter If you want, I can show you the hands-on part. So let me just show you. So on CloudX Lab, we have Jupyter on one end. On the other hand, we have so this is an assessment this is the jupiter here is a simple testing python example so on the left hand side you see a challenge in here in cloudx lab saying define access 10 and once you are done please check okay it says that x is not defined and assigned correctly so i'm going to assign 10 and then say shift enter and then try again you see that so it's basically checking your homework so we are going to give you more and more such exercises while you're working on Jupiter it can continuously check your work these are the exercises that we are working on so that your entire learning becomes very very you know like a game you get the feedback immediately so most of the exercises that we are going to do in case of the in this course is in this form the only downside of these exercises is that we can only evaluate your jupiter if it's running on the cloudx lab that's the only uh, problem but if you're okay with the you know self evaluating the assignment then you can you don't need cloudx lab as such but if you want this to happen then cloudx lab subscription is kind of needed because we really cannot evaluate your local machine system and that's one of the reasons that this was a quick example of evaluation so we basically have built these hands-on assessments for linux whereby you see a problem statement and hands-on and then you see the assessment it automatically checks whether you have done it or not done it so in case of linux for example this is the simplest one that's asking you to log in into the linux console and then it'll check whether you have logged in or not and then it'll keep on giving you more and more exercises then you'll be able to uh, learn in a way that it lasts say for example in linux tutorial it'll ask you to give set certain kind of permissions and and, and create certain kind of files then it'll automatically check whether you have done that or not so this is the example that we took that on the left hand side is a problem statement on the right hand side is your usual jupyter notebook you continue your jupyter notebook as such and it checks whether you have done it or not that means that for most of the work you do not need to ask anybody that you are doing good or not the system will keep on checking we are making more assessments on python and other languages and those will be available soon in your my courses right now they are not available in your my courses but they'll be available soon the course objective is to learn python from machine learning and deep learning question is what's the diff so difference different about python for machine learning and deep learning from big data from big data there's no difference because in big data we use the similar library we use the similar ways there's no difference at all python is same whether it's machine learning deep learning building a web application building a thick client python is same everywhere just that additional libraries are what matter say for example you're building a web application you will require django if you are working with machine learning, uh, then you'll require scikit-learn and NumPy. Those are the only differences. The core language is common and same for all. I talked about the instructor. I'm Sandeep Giri, and I enjoy explaining things. And this, this is our first code that we tried, 2 plus 3, which we all know. 
So we used the CloudX Lab blog where we've written down the details about how to install. The first attempt which we did was to use the CloudX Lab for Jupyter. We went over how Jupyter looks like and how to start Python 3. And we also talked about how to use the Jupyter. You basically write the code in the notebook in the shell and then press Shift Enter and then it gives you the result. In case of if you want to run it from the console, you can also click on Web Console, export the path, activate Python 3 environment, the 36 environment, and then launch. Once that was done, we also installed the Anaconda on our Windows. What is Anaconda? Anaconda is a bunch of software packaged together so that you don't need to install individual libraries separately. It comes with almost everything required for data sciences and machine learning. Except for TensorFlow, it doesn't come with TensorFlow. All we need to do was download Anaconda and we need to download 3.6 version. Then after the installation is completed, we needed to launch Anaconda Navigator and then launch the Jupyter Notebook. We can also start Anaconda prompt. From the Anaconda prompt, we could say Python 3 and then it would launch. Come over to the discussion forum. I would love to answer your questions at discuss.cloudxlab.com. I'm great to have uh, such a great audience today. Good set of questions. You will get a feedback form. You will have to respond to that feedback form. I'm, we are pretty much done. If you have more questions, please ask. If you want me to go over certain part again, I would love to go over it again. Today's session, the aim was to be able to do the installation, to be able to get started with our first simplest code possible, which was two plus three, to be able to give you an overview of CloudX Lab. Tomorrow, we are going to go ahead with Python. The approach is most likely going to be the hands-on. So instead of the old way where we had a classroom and uh, you know the teacher teaches first and then we go to the lab at the end of the session and then do, instead of that approach, you all have to work together as while I do the same thing, I do to do something, you have to do the same thing. And that's the only way to learn. And I have done enough experimentations and uh, we found that people only retained the parts that they actually worked on. I have taught more than 2000 hours, eight, nine lakhs lines of codes, and I've built like 10, 15 products. The only way to learn programming of any kind is by doing hands-on. Besides question A is why Conda can we do it with normal Python? Yes, just that you'll have to install these packages that we're going to use. NumPy, SciPy, Pandas, and Scikit-Learn. Great, great to have all of you in the session. Thank you, Suman. Thank you, Karthik. Thank you, Raju. Thank you, Pratik. Thank you, Prasad. Thank you, Edwin. I look forward to see you all tomorrow. The objective of today's session was to just get started. I have not used Google Hangout before, but it looks usable to me now. Thank you, uh, those who have answered the questions to other people, making our life uh, easier and more interactive. If you have more questions, come over to discuss.cloudxlab.com. Questions and hands-on is what makes you learn any technology. If you do not ask questions, you will not be able to grasp anything afterwards. A question from Sunil is that do we have any prerequisites for installing installing Anaconda Navigator in Office laptops? Try installing, just check that. It's an open source software, so your office should not have a problem with installing it. Just check if you have the, the admin rights and other things. Along with that, check with the office policies. I'm able to install fine, but when, when trying to open Anaconda Navigator, I'm getting error like Python has stopped working. Come over to the discussion forum. I think if you show us the screenshot, then I could, we could help you out with that. A question from Edwin is that, how well do we need to know Python in order to learn ML? So you don't need to be like very big expert at Python, but you should know how to write loops, how to write functions, how to build the logic using Python. Maybe the class is an object. Okay, you don't need to be a ninja at Python in order to learn ML. So those are the things that uh, come at the top of mind that are required in order to learn ML. Come over to the discussion forum. Uh, we would love to answer your questions. And these are, these are very good questions and they could also help others. Great to have all of you in the session. I look forward to see you tomorrow at the same time. Tomorrow's session is going to be three hours. Okay, it'll be from seven to 10. There is going to be a break of uh, 10 minutes. Thank you, everyone, again. I look forward to see you on the discussion forum. Bye-bye. Have a good day.